What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We absolutely serve an awesome, awesome God. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. I tell you what, I'm going to just jump right into the Word of God here for the next few moments. Last night we started talking about the challenge. We talked about Joshua and the walls of Jericho on last night. But on tonight we are going to talk about Queen Esther. Amen? Talking about taking calculated risks. Taking calculated risks. Praise God. Let's jump right into the word on tonight. I believe someone is at the crossroads on tonight. I said I believe that somebody is at the crossroads. You got a decision to make. Praise God. Listen to this. Uh, Esther chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. The Bible says again Esther spoke unto Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come under the king in the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death. Now watch this. Except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in under the king these 30 days. This is my, this is my first point here. A tough situation. Esther was faced with a very tough situation and no doubt about it some of you on this webinar tonight you're faced with a tough situation but i just want to give you a few pointers here i want you to do this take a good look at all of your options take a good look at all of your options don't be quick to rule certain things out you are not sure how God is going to work for you. You are sure he's going to work, but how and when he's going to do it, you just don't know. Amen? And I want, I want to say this. This which you are facing, it looks like a job for the favor of God. What was happening here was that Haman, a wicked king, he set out a plot to destroy all the Jews, which were the people of God, in the book of Esther. Amen? And the Bible says we know Esther had been chosen queen to take over Vashti's place. And so Mordecai, who had raised Esther, sent a message to her because she was queen and she had favor and clout with the king. And he sent a message to Esther to tell her, look, we are in trouble Haman has set out a plan to destroy the people of God. Doesn't that sound just like the devil? The Bible says Satan comes to do three things. He come to steal, he come to kill, and he come to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you can have life and that you can have it more abundantly. So Haman sent a message to Esther to tell her, you got to take a stand. You got to do something. Now, no doubt about it, there was some intense pressure on the shoulders of Esther. Even though she was queen, that king, they had a law in those days and time that if you went in the presence of the king and he did not send for you, didn't matter that she was the queen, didn't matter that, that she was his wife, if he did not send for her and she went unto him on her own accord in the king's domain where he's listen here he will he could have her kill so her life was on the line that's why she said look she said man the king hadn't called for me these 30 days and you know the law if i go in the presence of the king and he didn't want to see me the king can have me kill now watch what mordecai's response was to esther look let's move right along in esther chapter 4 verse 12 through 14 and they told Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai, full of the wisdom of God, he commanded to answer Esther. He sent this message to Esther. Think not with thyself that thou shall escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed and who knows glory to God who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this glory to God and this is my second point here you were born for such a time as this you were born for this time you were born for this season God brought you to the kingdom for such a time as 
does this. You can't hold your peace. I'm telling you, deliverance coming to the people of God depends on you stepping up to the plate. It's about you taking a step to the batter's mound. Batter's up, dear friend. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit on the sideline or are you going to throw down the gauntlet and say, count me in, God. God, with you, I can do it. I can't do it by myself, but with the strength of God, I can do it. That's why the Bible says, quit you like men. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm preaching to someone tonight. Your back is against the wall. You've already looked at all of your options and you got to take a calculated risk. Glory to God. Listen to this. Calculated risk. The dictionary describes it as a chance of failure. The probability of which is estimated before some action is undertaken glory to God you got to look at all the options I said you got to look at all the options but one thing we can rule out real quick is you can't just sit by idly and do nothing that's why God told Joshua just take the step of faith for wherever the soles of your feet shall tread I'm gonna give it to you he said Joshua be strong and of a good courage for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So Mordecai, I told Esther, if you hold your peace, deliverance, glory to God. I feel the preacher here. He said, if you hold your peace at this time, deliverance and enlargement will come from another place because God's not about to allow his people to be wiped out. I got news for some people who think they can just hold out on you, who can neglect you, who can turn their backs on you, who are not coming through when it's in their power to come through. I got news for those jokers who want to leave you hanging. Listen here. Deliverance Deliverance is going to come from someplace else. That's why you got to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help, it comes from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. God's not going to leave you. God's not going to forsake you. God's going to come through for you. If all you got is Moses' rod in your hand, that's enough for God to get the job done. Man, you might only have the jawbone of a donkey, but with God, God, that's enough to get the job done. You might only have a slingshot and a stone, but with God, that's enough to get the job done. You can't look to the left. You can't look to the right. You can't look to a man. You can't look to a woman, but you got a looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. My God, once you shout, there's going to be joy after this. There's there's going to be a celebration after this. There's going to be victory after this. There's going to be a breakthrough after this. My God, who am I preaching to tonight? Can somebody say after this, after this, after this, after this? My God, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, the Bible says after you have suffered a while, God's going to strengthen you. He is going to establish you. He is going to settle you. That that's why the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 66, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and we went through water, but God has brought us out into a wealthy place. Can someone say it? After this, I'm coming into my wealthy place. After this, I'm coming into a new realm of authority. After this, I'm coming into a new level of finances. After this, I'm coming into a greater level of anointing of the Holy Ghost. So Haman set out his evil plot to destroy the Jews. But God, he's always got somebody in position. I say, God, he always got somebody. I said, he always got somebody. And little that you know, God's got somebody. But all you got to do is look to Jesus. I said, all you got to do is look to Jesus. Because 
God. He's not going to let you. He's not going to let it go down like this. God's not going to leave you by yourself. God's going to be with you. I'm here to declare to you that no weapon that is formed against him shall be able to prosper. So Mordecai, I told Esther, who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Can someone say, God called me. God chose me. He brought me into the kingdom of his dear son for such a time as this. I'm telling you, God is about to make a way where there seems to be no way. My God, listen to this. Let's move right on here. Listen to this. Listen to Esther's reply. In Esther chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, she said, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. She said, And fast, fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Esther was laying the groundwork. Sometimes you got to turn the plate upside down. Sometimes you got to fast. You got to pray. You got to get alone with God. Who am I preaching to tonight? But she was laying the groundwork. Your fasting is not in vain. Your prayer is not in vain my God the sacrifice that you're making is not in vain you're giving into the ministry it's not in vain you paying your tithes it's not in vain I say God is taking note of all of it and little that you know God is about to come through I tell you as I meditated on the book of Esther last night God began to speak to me because if you read the entire book of Esther there's no place in the book of Esther that says thus says the Lord it seems like God in the book of Esther he is not dramatic he is not loud but you can see the hands of God all through the book of Esther working on his people behalf delivering them giving them promotions giving them favor giving them a breakthrough here giving them a breakthrough there I'm preaching to somebody you might seem like God hadn't been speaking real loud to you but I got news for you Look real good because if you look real good, you will see the hand of God at work. You will see the fingerprints of God at work. That's why the plane, the plane crashed. It couldn't kill you. That's why the car wreck didn't kill you. That's why the cancer didn't kill you. My God, the sickness, it didn't kill you. Somebody else died from the same sickness that you survive. God has got his hands on your life. That's why David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Can someone say God is with me? Can someone say God is with me? And if God be for you, who can be against you? Glory to God. So Esther was willing to take it. Esther laid the groundwork. She said, I want you to join with me. Let's go on a three-day fast. She said, and after this fast is over, I'm going in unto the king. I'm willing to risk it all. And if I perish, I perish. I'm willing to take the leap of faith. I'm willing to take the step of faith. I'm willing to step out on God. Who am I preaching to tonight? Are you willing to take God at his word? Are you willing to put your trust in him? Are you willing to step out on God? No matter how it looks from a natural standpoint, you got to put your trust in God. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. My God, he's directing someone tonight. Let's move right on. Glory to God. This is my fourth point here. The favor of God at work. But I want you to see something here. Before the favor of God could kick in, Esther had to take the risk. Watch this. Chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. This woman was willing to risk it all. The king didn't call for her. I said the king didn't call for her. Remind me of the three Hebrew boys who before they were thrown to the fiery furnace, they said, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this manner, but the God we serve, glory to God, the God we serve, he is well able to deliver us 
from the burning fiery furnace. The Bible says it came to pass that Esther put on a royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate over against the gate of the house and it was so when the king saw Esther my God he had a decision to make her he could have said wipe her out he could have said killed her but the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of God and as the rivers of water God can turn it up however he will the Bible says when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she had obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter she found favor I said she found favor glory to God can somebody shout I found favor with God I found favor with God which seemed like it wasn't working before it's about to work now things that wasn't moving before it's about to move now because I found favor somebody shout favor somebody shout I found favor with God I found favor with God and the Bible says in Psalm chapter 102 verse 12 David said for God will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time the set time the set time has come the set time has come he's about to give you favor in places that turn you down before they're about to accept you because the favor of God I say favor ain't fair can someone shout it favor ain't fair when the favor of God comes on your life the enemy got a back up the enemy got to back off when the favor of God touches down on your life like Joseph you will go from the pit to the palace overnight when the favor of God touches down on your life like Queen Esther you may be an adopted child my God but you can go from being an adopted child to being the queen over the kingdom overnight somebody shout I got favor somebody shout I got favor the Bible says in Psalm chapter 5 verse 12 the Bible says for God will compass the righteous with favor like with a seal I said the favor of God the favor of God I release the favor of God on your life I release the favor of God in your situation I release the favor of God over your finances I release the favor of God over your business ideas I release the favor of God over that project that you're working on I release the favor of God over the house you believe in God for I release the favor of God over the car you believe in God for somebody shout blessed somebody shout I'm blessed somebody shout I'm blessed and when Esther stood she found favor with the king and the king said just go on ahead and make your request whatever you ask I'm willing to give it to you I'm willing to give it to you even up to half of the kingdom my God it was the wisdom of God that was released to Esther that showed Esther what she needed to do and after the fast Esther held a banquet for the king and the king said darling whatever you want I'll give it to you somebody shout I got favor I got favor I got favor glory to God I release the favor of God on your life I said I release the favor of God on your life I release the favor of God on your life Esther was willing to take a calculated risk and as a result of the risk that Esther was willing to take all of the Jews were spared and all of the people that rose up against the people of God they were wiped out the tables was turned in their favor and God's turning the tables and somebody's favor on tonight the tables are turning their friends it's turning in your favor the tables are turning right now I know what you face with seem difficult but God's working in your favor this very second the favor of God the favor of God the favor of God being released on your life I bless every single one of you that's a part of this webinar tonight I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus I bless the work of your hands in the mighty name of Jesus I bless your finances 
in the name of Jesus. I speak increase over your life. I declare increase over your life. I command you to increase on the left, the right, east, west, north, and south, back and front. I command increase to take place in your life. I command the favor of God to help you find favor with man, to find favor with people in authority, like Joseph found favor with Pharaoh, like Esther found favor with this king. I release the favor of God on your life in the mighty name of Jesus.